What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster on this beautiful Saturday night party night. Earthquake activity continuing right there on the Hot Cave Station, which is out there on the big island of Hawaii near Pahala. Earthquake swarming continuing. It is about 8.21 p.m. West Coast time here, August 15th, 2022. And the latest quake shows a 3.0 earthquake out there on the big island. Quite the earthquake swarm, I would say, continuing in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the USGS map showing the uh, three-pointer. Well, at least here on the USGS map here showing a 2.6. Uh, maybe we'll get this adjusted. It looks like the last earthquake was just a few minutes ago. So maybe the USGS has not um, popped up that earthquake yet. All right, let's look at the swarming. And the earthquake activity continuing here just southwest, eh, kind of south of Pahala area, the big island, southeastern flank of Mauna Loa. Of course, one of the most active volcanoes here on the planet. Been a while since we've seen an eruption back in the 80s. So it's going to eventually fill in as far as that little gap in the eruption history. Quite a bit of activity over the last 24 hours. Looking at about 46 earthquakes scattered out and about here. Again, this area, this little swarming area that I'm kind of focused on here, showing a variable of depths there down there, roughly between about 7 all the way down to 33 kilometers, 34 kilometers. So things are in adjustment mode, so to speak. Uh, and uh, still kind of watching this for potential adjustment and unusual activity at Mauna Loa Volcano. Uh, but so far we have not noticed any type of uh, um, odd uh, activity. Looking at the Mauna Loa seismograph here, we're gonna bring up the latest activity down here. Within the region, the last 12 hours of earthquake activity still showing quite a bit of movement here across the board at the Pahala area. That activity uh, definitely showed up on the USGS map. Kind of want to get a little bit closer here to the Pahala area and check the last six hours. Quite a bit. Um, I don't think we're seeing the activity that just came in uh, over the last 10 minutes or so. Things are kind of slow here on this graph. But uh, trust me, it's there. Definitely going to be showing up uh, pretty closely or uh, pretty soon, I should say, in the... Um, Pahala area. Swarming continuing. Alright, let's go ahead and check out uh, what else we got. Let's, let's back out here and see what we got. A little bit of quiet zones down here along the Kermadec Trench, Tonga area. Over here along the Western Pacific and the Indonesia area. Some activity, although the majority of this is actually from earlier this morning time frame. So, not a whole lot of newer renewed activity here along the western pacific and adjacent plates so what does that mean well, well technically it should mean that we should be lighting up here along the west coast or at least the north american plate uh we got a little little activity here in the new, Mex new mexico area let's see if that's actually in new mexico or if it's yeah i think it's on the texas side <laughs> if you want to be specific a 3.2 there uh, on the Texas side at 7.5 kilometers deep. Now, I'm not for certain if we have any... Um, well, okay, there we go. That kind of shut me up real quick. Shut me up real quick, actually. Uh, satellite view shows uh, those are not uh, uh, houses out there, but those are actually um, oil pumping operations with an injection wastewater out here in that pond. And this earthquake that just struck is... I'm not even choking, like right smack dab on it. Uh, at 7.5 kilometers there. No brainer as to what's going on out there in the uh, northern, uh, uh, that's not really northern Texas. It's, I don't even know what they consider this out here. We'll call this the Texas New Mexico border here uh, outside of Pecos. All right, uh, Oklahoma, a little bit of calm activity. Weather kind of kicking up out there. Seen some, uh, some thunderstorms kicking off earlier tonight here in the Oklahoma area. Kind of watching a couple of my uh, storm chaser friends out there. Eastern portion of the country, all pretty quiet. Around the Caribbean plate, about the same. If you notice though, look at South America. Things kind of ramping up here 
in the South America region over the last 24 hours. Uh, the last one was earlier this afternoon, a 4.3 earthquake, about 70, uh, 172 kilometers deep into the Peru-Chile Trench uh, near Antonio de los Cobres, Argentina, or underneath this area, I should say. So things kind of heighten up uh, out there as far as earthquake activity goes. All right, let's zoom in to the west coast here and see what we got. Not a whole lot. Uh, Northern California looking pretty spotty. Uh, in fact, if you look through the majority of the state here, things are awfully quiet. Um, some older movement down south along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. But man, uh, just a little spotty activity today. Uh, and not a whole lot of new movement. So in cases like this, kind of have to wonder where this teeter-totter event is going to go to. Uh, and I think we're kind of right there in the middle. A lot of times we see activity kick up here along the uh, eastern portion of the Pacific Plate and adjacent plates here, the Nazca and the Cocos Plate. And then vice versa, sometimes we see activity pick up here along the western Pacific and quiet over here. But right now, things are just equally quiet everywhere. Uh, but if this Texas earthquake, uh, pressure out here along the uh, weak areas of the crust, because that's technically what these oil pumping operations are doing, is creating uh, weak spots out here in the North American continent. Um, and if that rings true, we should see activity pick up here along the west coast here pretty soon uh, with this movement kicking up there in Texas. Now, let me bring up the Yellowstone area because we've seen a little bit of activity kind of ramping up here along the old North American Craton over the past couple hours. Notice the activity ramping up here. Uh, these are that's probably at least a two pointer. Some of these very close to two, and then some other smaller ones below 1.0 on the magnitude level. Uh, but it's definitely been ramping up here over the past four or five hours there at Yellowstone National Park, and the majority of this activity kind of looks like it's uh, centered around the northwestern corner here of the caldera. Looking at Mary Lake, uh, seeing that prominent activity as well. Very well defined. And the USGS has not shown anything up here. And I'm going to explain why uh, this is the all magnitudes map. But look at that. Nothing showing up. Even though we see that very discreet across the board here. Very, I mean, that's obviously earthquake activity. But unfortunately... Whoever is in charge out there of the weekend events, and uh, I would love to see that change. Um, whoever's in charge of the preliminary earthquake data systems out here at Yellowstone, whether it's a supervisor or whoever, management, um, they halt the activity when it comes to microquake activity and only show stuff that pops up 2.5 and above. Why? I don't know. But I think it would be fair um, if they were to at least put out uh, the activity and then maybe make the adjustments on Monday when they come into the office with their coffee and their donuts and whatnot and chit-chat a little bit about what happened this weekend. And, uh, and then they can um, go over the activity, the data, and then make adjustments from there. But I just don't like it when there's activity kicking up. And we know it. We see it well-defined across the board but not showing up unless it's above 2.5 what why is it got to be above 2.5 i mean it's just odd put all the earthquakes up there folks i mean it's and if they're wrong far as the location goes or magnitudes readjust them come monday uh, it's not that hard of a not that big of a deal i just don't like how they turn off the uh the systems here for the catalog the earthquake catalog and only show 2.5 and above when we know there's activity kicking up so it's just, you know, I don't know. One of those things kind of kind of uh, gets on my nerves a little bit. All right, uh, Alaska, some activity it looks like over the past 24 hours. Nothing major, folks. Again, I think we're at this little heightened, or not heightened, but uh, this little area, so to speak, of where we're waiting on something to happen. And uh, again, this activity is older. Uh, some of this activity is new down here, but the majority of this as well 
is about as old as the Western Pacific. So where do we go? Where's the next uh, activity going to kick up? Well, um, it's hard to say. Got to look at some of the deeper movement quakes that we've seen over the last 24 hours. And uh, we have seen some activity here in the Indonesia area, some deeper movement at the Java Trench levels. I think very possibly that we could see adjustment down here at the surface levels up here around the locked area, so to speak, of the Java Trench. That's just one area. Uh, of course, Guam, the, the uh, Mariana Trench activity, that one was not a super deep earthquake, but it did show some signs of uh, some movement earlier this afternoon. Uh, at about 51 kilometers deep. So a couple areas to watch. And um, yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Tremor activity tonight, folks. We have 262 epicenters of Tremor. And to me, it kind of looks like there's a little bit of a migration here of the swarming a little bit further south. Now we've been watching these two areas of intense trimmer swarming so to speak over the last few weeks and it's been confined here mostly to the Oregon area but it looks like there may be a new area down here venturing into Northern California or underneath Northern California I should say uh, they're along the Cascadia subduction zone let's see what we got for um, Mount St. Helens As we zoom in here to a recorded seismogram at Mount St. Helens. Kind of a, yeah, a little bit of earthquake activity there. It looks like within the last few minutes. I'm going to go over the last afternoon time period. Or this previous afternoon time period, I should say. I see that. A couple of small earthquakes. Nothing big. Nothing major. And if I remember right, I believe... Ooh, that's kind of black there. Let's go back here to the all magnitudes map here and see what we got i believe they actually showed some of those earthquakes up here at mount st helens around the area over the course of the afternoon time frame and uh kind of looks like uh what we're seeing right there a couple small earthquakes but nothing major no major swarms no magma movement at all at all all right uh let's see what else we got solar weather activity and then i think we're gonna call it quits saturday night not one to stay up super late on a Saturday. Not one of those. I, you know, I kind of used to be a party guy, but uh, those days are like long gone. I, I, I don't like waking up, wondering what happened last night. Where, where was I? <laughs> not, not that type of uh, guy anymore. I think I kind of learned my lesson, so to speak. Uh, let's see what else we got here for solar weather activity. No major coronal holes. Solar flare activity is diminishing. And um, only, only a 35% chance of a sea flare. All other levels are kapunk down, way down there. And uh, that's bad news. If you want to see the auroras, not looking likely. And uh, looking at at least the uh, magnetic field map here, all these other sunspots have long gone along the northwestern portion of the sun. And we're left with not a whole lot. Uh, just a, uh, a couple lonely, lonely sunspots out there that do not harbor any potential for any type of flaring. Uh, and this development down here is just old. I think this is some of these older sunspots that we witnessed over the past few weeks that have just completely deteriorated and are now no longer um, active in their magnetic fields. 3121. Wow, whoop de doo <laughs> Look, nothing. I mean, it's not even visible. You can't even really see it. So we are entering into a very, very quiet period, folks, of solar weather activity. A one earthquake out here in Quebec, it looks like a 2.1 uh, August 14th. Aside from that, no, not a whole lot going on there, folks, across the board. And uh, just going to be one of those, uh, one of those little quiet periods. But of course, if something changes, we'll be here to uh, send out a notification and then we'll go from there. Either way, Hawaii, still got to watch that. There's a lot going on out there in Hawaii uh, along the southeastern portion of the Mauna Loa area. And that may be the, our middle point. That may be our little squeeze of, of the uh, teeter-totter effect, so to speak. 
what that could mean that could mean an active volcano out there another active volcano could see Mauna Loa fire up pretty soon and we'll keep an eye on it and of course uh, watch that pretty closely small microquake activity continuing along the South America trench or the uh, Prucelli trench I should say not a whole lot going on through New Zealand there's a 3.8 um, but aside from that not a whole lot going on along the uh, Kermadec trench Tonga trench Fiji Papua New Guinea all pretty quiet there's some of that movement over here, some smaller microquake activity along the Java Trench, and uh, that may be one of our areas to watch, so uh, should things start moving. But uh, we'll wait on that and see how it goes. Uh, the Hawaii Hot Caves map still showing some activity. Of course, we got uh, quite a few stations up here, Mount St. Helens, uh, Petrolia there in Northern California above that. A station down along the Peru Chile Trench there in Chile and uh, a Japan station there to monitor activity out there along the Western Pacific and of course the hot caves Hawaii very close to the Pahala area southeastern portion there of Mauna Loa volcano and of course the swarm continues there tonight all right guys have a good night again congratulations to our member uh, drawing or our member winner uh, J. Fuentes 347. Look at that. I know that name right off off the bat. Didn't even have to, have to look at the uh, the winner notification board here. So we're good. Um, and they, uh, of course, they are our winner of this month. And we do every single month. We try to give out something free uh, to our members because it's our way of basically saying thank you. Aside from the extra videos and perks and emojis, we like to give away free stuff. Who doesn't like free stuff? I know I do, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, congrats again. And uh, all right, we'll jump off here. Going to go back to watching some TV. And uh, well, not TV necessarily, but we're kind of watching the series here with Missy Mimi's. And uh, I'm not going to say what it is. Maybe I'll clue into the members. But uh, <laughs> all right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe. We'll chat you guys sometime tomorrow. Peace out.